I tend to be, you know, just in my sinful flesh, I tend to be concerned about how am I sounding, mm -hmm. both in my ears and out front. That's, that's what it concerns me. And, you know, I put everybody else down in the mix, and I'm up there, and I want to make, make sure people hear me out there. And God's saying, well, don't look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others, mm -hmm. which means I want to hear others. I mm -hmm. want to make sure that others are heard. Welcome to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music, where we explore what the Bible has to say about music and worship in the church and encourage those who plan, lead, and participate in their Sunday gatherings each week. Hello and welcome to the Sound Plus Doctrine podcast. My name is David Zimmer. My name is Bob Coughlin. And we have Devin Coughlin here with us again. 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 Come on. Again. <laughs> no, it's so Sound great to excited. have you. <laughs> we are very excited. Um, we uh, often get questions sent in to our podcast, which we love, uh, and we got one that is uh, this question. <laughs> great. Ready? I'm ready. Are you on the edge of your seats? Yes. No, I think it's a great question. How do we balance as a musician staying in our lane and not allowing our thoughts slash opinions to interfere with the millions of adjustments a sound tech is balancing on a Sunday. Millions. Right? Millions. That may be hyperbole, but, <laughs> but we'll take it. Sure. From the soundboard perspective, okay, switching perspectives, how much authority slash autonomy do you give the person to turn down or eliminate something that may be well-performed, but just distracting for the congregation? So two, two viewpoints here. Should we give our sound people authority to turn down distracting elements of musicianship or out of time or out of tune instruments or musician who just might may not have it that morning? I love that. <laughs> I love the end of that. <laughs> really, really good. So two different perspectives here. Like how do we um, how do we th you know allow thoughts from a from the stage or from the people who are leading? How do we interact with our sound tech, and how does how much power does he have yeah. uh, as well towards towards us that that relationship? Can we talk about the question of just not having it on <laughs> certain mornings? I feel like some mornings I just don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Can he just turn you off completely? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's yeah. Maybe that's for another podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get more into the reasons behind that. Yes. And, okay. No, it's a it's a great question, and I think it's one of the things that's great is it it. Uh, it, it, we every Sunday we come into a, a, a field that's uh, filled with landmines, in a sense, and most <laughs> yeah. of those landmines are there because of our sinful hearts. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, but as we gather together as the people of God, it's we come together as sinners. I mean, we, br we yes. bring our sin with us. It's all we got. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, before we get into the practicals of like what does it look like to work together, uh, I think it has to start with. Um, do we have a shared understanding of what we're actually gathered together to do? Yeah, yeah uh, good. Do we both know as musicians, as leaders, as uh, uh, sound techs, what are we, what we're aiming at? Yeah. Do we know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, especially when it comes to the production side of what we do, because there, there are production elements to gathered worship in the 21st century. And uh, varying levels of production, varying elements. levels, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and someone might be uh, well, it's professionals that shape that. I, I want to say, like, it's it's what churches do sound wise, it's shaped by an industry and a, and a world of like of, of concerts and performance. And, um, yeah, let me can I add a nuance? To yeah, that? add a nuance to that. Uh, it, it often is. There are the basics, though, of, of sound amplification, which is um, part of our age, part of our time in history, yeah. where that's, that's, you know, if you're going to speak to a crowd of 500, yeah. you can have sound amplification. That's to be distinguished from pressures yeah. and examples well, so and models. I, I wasn't yeah, good. I'm not saying that as a, um, as a negative, necessarily. I I'm just okay. stating the fact that, like, Innovation happens, yes, uh, because of these professional contexts, yeah, mm. um, in a sense, and so uh, that's what's determining uh, what goes into it. So um, you have a, a a sound tech and using gear and equipment yeah. that is made for a purpose, and although we're using it, 
and it could be it could be made for the church, but generally we're we're repurposing it. Yes, it was made for performance. It was made for concerts, um, and so you've got that. There's that dynamic going on, and we're using it in different contexts. Mm -hmm. And then on the musician side, uh, you're if it's if it's a craft that you've developed and the skill and gift that you have. And so I'm speaking of the kind of the, the maybe the higher end musician. Um, the context that you've been trained in and been learning are for performance. Yeah, professional uh, context. Yeah, and uh, and it's and it's it's professional. And so those. That's just, uh, yeah, again, statement describing the scenarios, the dynamics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but when the church comes together, it's not a concert, right? it's not a performance, and it's not driven by those values. It's right. not a situation where uh, I, it's, it, it's not driven by a, hey, you stay in your lane, I'll stay in mine, this is what I'm here to do, yeah. this is yeah. what you're here to do. Yeah. As the church has become together, we're actually doing these things together. Yes. And yes. Uh, and so I think it's so important that we we grasp that. So both the musician and the sound tech sh are are aiming at the same things. The sound engineer, I should be yes. saying probably. Uh, aiming at the same things and that is to help the word of Christ wellness richly. Yes. That is see to see God glorified and the mm -hmm. and the people of God built up into mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Um and so that's what that's what we're doing. That's what we're about. And so as we begin to think about our relationship, it's like, oh no, we're all in this together. And it's something I've said before, and I'm sure I'll say it again. But this is why I talk about like we're here to support singing. Yes. Yeah. And so, what do you call the musicians in your church? <laughs> not the worship team. I call them the support the singing support team. Support the singing team. <laughs> Which it's is really the, catching on. Yeah, it doesn't have a <laughs> ring to I, it. I, I'm just trying to give you airtime so more people <laughs> but, will, but I, will I, use that. But I always. But no I, one's going to use it. But when it's to support the singing team, that includes the engineer that's running sound. Right. Yeah, for sure. That includes the person that's running projection. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all aimed at the same thing. Yeah. And that's supporting the singing of the church. Yeah, in a non-distracting way, all parties involved. Right. Yeah. So con if uh, contrasting to a, a sound engineer who's just saying, I want this to sound amazing. I want to be able to hear, you know, the, the, the boom and the kick. I want them to be able to hear the sparkle in that guitar riff. I want, you know, just all that kind of stuff, which in a and performance... There's a, well, and there's a place for those things. There's a place yeah. for those things, but not as the but ultimate in a, goal. But in a performance, that's what you're aiming at. That's right. That's the ultimate standard. And for a musician, I'm going to show them my chops. Yep. And yeah, so yeah. it's just similar things, but very different because of the purpose for which we're gathered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that it's so important that we have that shared understanding. All right, what are we aiming at? And that's something we talk about regularly Incessantly. on this <laughs> podcast. That's what this podcast is all about. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what are we aiming at? We just keep saying the same things over and over, just different We're the same things people. That's fine. Amen. Yeah. Um, so once we get to that point of shared purpose, then we can begin to talk about, all right, what does it look like to, to work together yeah. practically? Mm -hmm. And I think as we move to that part of the conversation, it starts with, the right attitude, having the right attitude. Oh, for sure. So we know what we're aiming at, uh, but now it's the disposition of our hearts and what is that disposition. Uh, and that begins with, I think, an understanding of who we are in mm -hmm. Christ as those joined to Christ, united mm. to Christ. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, that's our identity. Uh, so it's Paul in Galatians 2.20, uh, a, a, a uh, paradig paradigmatic verse for the Christian life. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm. Mm. Uh, in the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. And so in Christ, there is this place of uh, my my particularities and my preferences, they matter. I, I live by faith in the Son of God, uh, but they're not primary. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not what determine uh, how I participate and, and who I am. What determines mm -hmm. that is is Christ and who I am in Christ. I've been mm -hmm. crucified with Christ. The old me has died. Yes. I have new life in him. Um, so it's identity. And then that identity fosters in us a humility, uh, yeah. a humility recognizing that my life is not my own. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I'm here to serve yeah. um, and to be a part of and participate in what God is already doing. And And so I want to be here to serve. Which and is easy to talk about on a podcast, much harder when you're in the middle of a rehearsal on a Sunday morning. Absolutely. Totally. And but that's where we need to remind one yeah, another, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the thing that's that's going on, the, the practicals of what's taking place on a Sunday morning as we set up and we rehearse and as we play, like that 
those things are all an expression of us being the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what what uh, we're called to in Scripture as the church, we're called to be putting on in those moments. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. so I think of uh, uh, Colossians 3, uh, 12 through 15, and, and Paul mm-hmm. says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. What do we put on? Compassionate mm-hmm. hearts. Yeah. yeah. So am I being compassionate with those yeah. I'm serving with? Yeah. Uh, kindness, humility, meekness, mm-hmm. and patience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he says, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against one another, yes. forgiving each other, uh, as the Lord in Christ has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything mm-hmm. together in perfect harmony. Yeah. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in body, and be thankful. Yeah. And I mean, if if <laughs> we're allowing that to shape our attitudes as we come together, I think that brings a lot of clarity. Yeah, yes. yeah. And, just do that. Thanks for uh, joining <laughs> us this week. We'll see you next week. <laughs> uh, and I think there's this um, this reality that like we're called. That's not the only place that we're called to do it, but we're called to bear with one another. Yeah. yeah. And we bear with one another in our weakness and in the midst of our our limitations, which are God's gift to us, part of God's design yes, for us. Yes, we're finite yes. people. Um, in bear with one another in our in our sin and uh, and so there should be we should have a a lot of room for things not going how we might want them to go yes. mm-hmm. professionally as we gather together as the church not sacrificing the desire to serve the church well yep yeah. you're not just throwing that to the curb and saying it doesn't matter no you care but you mm-hmm. approach it with an attitude of humility yeah mm-hmm. two things I want to say about what you just said the verse from Colossians. Right after that passage mm-hmm. is, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, mm-hmm. teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. That, yep. That's what precedes it. Yep. Yeah. So, wow, Paul connects them. God yep. connects them, so maybe we should connect them. Yep. Oh, it's, it, Paul does the same thing in Ephesians. I mean, mm. in, the, in, the, in the passage where it's talking about our unity, uh, we are one in Christ, mm. He starts that off with, walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, Mm -hmm. eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, those are the things that we're living out. Yeah. And, And they apply directly to how do I interact with the musician? Or how do I interact with the sound engineer? Yeah. Um, now, I, we've I've made this assumption. I just want to make it clear. The assumption that we're making is that the people that are participating are members in your church. Mm. That is a key element. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that we did of, a podcast on that. Should you have unbelievers on your worship team? So, yeah. But I, I just want to make sure. That, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the assumption we're making. That's the conviction that we would yeah. have. Yeah. Um, and that's why these things all apply. Yes. Yeah. Because it's not performance. It's not production. It's God, by the Spirit, building us into Christ. That's what's happening on Sunday yes. mornings. Mm-hmm. And I said, that should you have unbelievers? Does, not to assume that because you're not a member, you're an unbeliever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just realized I conflated this too. Yeah, <laughs> very if you're not a member of church, you're an unbeliever. <laughs> but on another point, that's a good podcast, <laughs> but on another point. That's awesome. Yeah, you do want the people who are serving... I think, yeah. to be members of the church. They're, they're there for the vision of the church, the teaching of the church. God has joined them there, not just because they get to showcase their gifts, yeah, which and, we could do a whole yep. podcast. Yeah, but and, I mean, to take it a step further, like, the people that are serving should be modeling those characteristics. I mean, yep. there shouldn't be a person Absolutely. on your team that's consistently angry, and consistently yeah, critical, yeah. or consistently... Insistent you know. on their own way. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so can... I don't know how you're thinking about leading this step, but can we talk about some of the, like, practical... Yeah, that's where I want to get okay, now. Okay, great. It's just so we've, we've talked about right understanding of what we're aiming at, Yeah. right attitude as we interact with one another. Now it's a question of, okay, what's the right practice and yeah, just really yeah, practically yeah. what yeah. does it look like for musicians and sound engineers to work together Sunday to Sunday as we're seeking to aim at the right things and glorify God and edify God's people and and this the question from uh, a friend of ours actually named Nathan um, has to deal with like what's out heard out front mm-hmm. so that's one area mm-hmm. I think the other area that musicians uh, can struggle in is the monitor area. So what I hear mm-hmm. versus what everybody hears. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we could address both of those yeah. mm-hmm. arenas. Well, so yeah. I, I, when it comes to right practice, I think it starts with. Uh, I think it's it's 
helpful for churches to have a clear understanding and for everybody involved in serving, a clear understanding of who is ultimately responsible for what's happening in the Sunday gathering. And I know, I mean, I would, I would have the conviction that we would share that really that's a, that's a pastoral yeah, responsibility. Yeah. Um, and so there should be some, there should be some clarity that, oh, th- like a, a pastor is responsible for what's going on yeah. It yeah. just as, as a whole. And, uh, and so monitoring and, and making sure that we're staying within the bounds of... Would you say... This is what we're aiming at. Monitoring? Monitoring. Oh, monitoring. Paying attention to. I'm trying Sorry. to. Sorry. Just, just, just <laughs> stay. I'm tracking um, with you. And so then from there, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of big picture. From there, it's like, I think you're going to have people that are directly responsible for various aspects yes. of mm-hmm. what's yes. taking place. Mm-hmm. And you should say whether that pastor is musical or not, they're responsible for yep. the meeting. So yep. the singing portion of the meeting, whether they went to school for audio engineering, they're responsible for the sound of what's coming from that from the front of the room. Yeah, and it you know pastors can kind of check out and yep. go, well, I don't know, I don't have any control over that. You know, yeah. No, you're responsible. It's your th- these are the people God has given you to shepherd, yep. yeah. and you're going to even count to God for them. So you are the one who's responsible ultimately in a human level, human manner of speaking, to to bring order and to bring clarity to whatever is taking yeah. place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one thing you told me uh, that's always stuck with me, maybe 20 years ago, um, just as you're serving in a church, uh, you're certainly serving the Lord, but you're serving someone else's vision for how that church is yes, to be led. Yeah. Um, mm. And that was, I mean, that was a, a strike to my proud heart. Uh. <laughs> um but I think that's the right disposition that we should have yeah. as those who are participating. Because we, t- we can tend to hold tightly to, well, no, this is my domain. Like, yes. This, is, yes. this is my spot. Yeah. Like, don't touch that. So if the, the pastor who has no experience as a musician or no uh, really <laughs> auditory sense yes. of what's going on, uh, we can be like, what do you, I mean, like, just keep your mouth shut. Like, yeah. what are you stay talking about? This is, yeah, stay in your lane. <laughs> Uh, but recognizing, no, this is the this is this is the the man or the man that God has put in place yes. Yes. Uh, to uh, to shepherd these people, yes. and I'm a part of that, and I'm serving that. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I think of you didn't mention this earlier, but it's it's like everything that is written to us in the church, um, in the New Testament. God's saying, "Be like my son." Yep. And Philippians two, three, and four: Do nothing from selfish ambition. Or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Mm-hmm. So, practically speaking, like if I if I'm um, a musician on you know playing as part of the band, I tend to be you know just in my sinful flesh, I tend to be concerned about how am I sounding. Mm-hmm both in my ears and out front. That's, that's what it concerns me. And, you know, I put everybody else down in the mix, and I'm up there, and I want to make, make sure people hear me out there. And God's saying, well, don't look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others, mm-hmm. which means I want to hear others. I mm-hmm. want to make sure that others are heard. So that's going to temper mm-hmm. whatever yes. input I give. You know, if someone else is mixing my monitor for me, I want to be where they're mixing for everybody else in the band. Mm-hmm. If if you have you know, multiple yep. people yeah. in your yeah. band, if I I'm talking to the sound engineer out front, I want to be where they're tr- trying to get the whole thing together and make it sound good for the people and they have a lot of instruments to work on and just just being aware of that. Totally really helps temper how, how, how you do you it. handle that uh, when it comes to just arranging I mean so as musicians you're you're wanting to let's say arrange the song to support the singing of the church mm. um, uh, wh- what do you communicate or how do you interact with the front of house engineer who is maybe also thinking that way yeah but sometimes those things can come into conflict with one another yeah where maybe the front of house engineer decides, I don't like that part. Yeah. Or this, <laughs> well, or he really question. doesn't have it today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> you, don't you just don't have, have it today. today. <laughs> Could you play less? <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. What, what do you do in that circumstance? I have been, yeah. this, I think this is an ongoing uh, issue. And I don't think. And your wife is often the front of house engineer. My wife has been the front, <laughs> Julia yeah. has been uh, the front of house engineer. 
I've tried to create a culture where there's good communication between the front of house and the musicians and have said to numerous front of house engineers at times, tell us if our arrangements are bad. So mm -hmm. we finish a rehearsal and say, anything you want to tell us. I mean, we've had sound engineers come up and say, yeah, don't play that. Yep. Or we'll work on an electric guitar sound and just say, it's just really muddy. Right. Yeah, you all seem to be right here. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. To the two exactly. guitars you're playing. We want that. Yep. Yes. And so, so to answer the question, it's, you know, stay in your lane, yes, but part of staying in your lane is is – aggressively receiving receiving yep. and asking for that kind of input. I don't want someone out front who's just saying, okay, well, whatever the musicians do is fine. You know, I just totally. got to work with it. I'd rather not have an, uh, an engineer, you know, just t turn me down. Right. Yeah. If I'm overplaying, say, you know what? Your bass is like all in the way of the bass. Yeah. And you, it'd be helpful. I mean, my son-in-law, one of them, um, because I have four, said to me one Sunday, this was a number of years ago, uh, and he had said this to me frequently, Zach, um, yeah, if you stop playing your left hand, you know, maybe the, the you could hear the bass or something like that. And just kind of joking. But You're probably it, not the first person no, that said that to you. No, definitely not the first person. <laughs> but it just landed on me, hmm. and I realized I've been teaching this stuff for like 30, 40 years, <laughs> and I'm still playing with my left hand. So I'll just use that area of the piano much more sparsely now mm. than I used to. And it's because he had the freedom and the intentionality to say, yep. yeah, I think you're doing this. I want us all to feel that right. way. Yes. And it's just an ongoing conversation. Well, and well, and he's able to say that with the right attitude. He's coming humbly. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. coming with an understanding yeah. of, I know what we're aiming at. Yeah. Um, and I think it would probably serve if... Yeah, and it was kind of a humorous way. And, yeah, and you do it in a joking way. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I think vice versa, too. There's, um, There can be... You know, I've worked with sound gen engineers that it becomes a power trip of, well, I have all the control and power. <laughs> and so I think that maybe a little bit of what Nathan's talking about here of like, I'm going to stay in my lane, you stay in your yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah. You know, you exercise your power over there and I'll exercise my yes. power right here. I think vice versa, there could also be where this can come into play is is an understanding that there needs to be humility on a sound engineer's part of you're going to receive a lot of input yes, from a yes. lot of people yes, that you, you that is unwelcomed, typically. Yeah. And to be okay with that yeah. and to mm -hmm. be able to know, okay, God has, has has gifted me in these ways. He's helped me, you know, get better at this, and I know what I'm doing here, but I can also be open to receive. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I think, you know, that's helpful. And another thing is, you use Zach as an example, I think if you had an opportunity to move your team around, again, granted, it would it would require like more than three people. But if one of your drummers could go and stand in the sound booth, or yeah. if one of your vocalists can go, yes. you can then get a better understanding of the room. You can get a better yes. understanding of what he's hearing, because we get so locked mm -hmm. into our own head, our own if mix. If you use in-ear monitors. Yeah. If you use in-ear monitors, but even... Even if you're dealing with like wedges. Yeah, even yeah. if you don't. I know, I mean, just this past Sunday, I had an experience where it was, I wasn't leading, wasn't playing. And, but I'm, I'm out there and I'm hearing things in a different way. And it's, yeah. it was very helpful. And yep. it's like, oh, I should probably have a conversation with the person doing front of house and, and uh, just remind them of kind of what we're aiming at, what we're seeking to do, yes. and um, how we're seeking to support the singing and right. how practically. You can support singing better. And yeah. this was a guy newer newer to mixing, and uh, but it was helpful yes. to be able to be out there. And, yeah, and totally. that's, this is where we're a, it was a cajon, an acoustic guitar, and a bass. And that was the, the extent of the band. Mm. But just recognizing, yeah. oh, even in, with that simplicity, it's like, okay, we, we can still be asking questions about, all right, what does it look like? Yes. To, yeah. Um, better serve serve those that are gathered. Yeah, and you used the word uh, awareness, which I just think is is really great. I mean, typically when we show up on a Sunday morning, we're getting all of our, you know, things situated in our ears and we're like setting up our instruments or whatever. Some Sunday when you're not playing, 
show up early with your sound tech and just watch what he does or uh, what she does yes, yes. to get ready. Yeah. Like, you know, with all the channels and everything that is required in doing that, yeah. it'll create an awareness That's good. that maybe you don't have. Yeah. And I, as I was thinking about this topic, I thought there's two kinds of communication that are needed. One is the Sunday morning com- communication, which is just, we want this free flow of information that 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 people are confident they can share their thoughts yeah. mm-hmm. about each other. So sometimes I'll go out in the front as as the band is playing and just listen. So when we have a choir once a month, I'll just listen and see how it sounds and give thoughts. And um, other times we'll, we'll get feedback from front house engineer or yeah, we'll just be exchanging yeah. information. But then it can also be helpful to have like planned times of communication. Mm-hmm. So we had like a sound afternoon a few months back where we just talked about what are we trying to do? And yeah. we actually changed the schedule of our Sunday morning um, to allow for a time for the person running sound to get, to, to hear the different instruments alone. So mm-hmm. give them a few minutes for that rather mm-hmm. than just everybody coming in. A lot of times people come in for on a Sunday morning, it's just kind of chaotic. Right, just start playing. Yes. Yeah, just start playing, playing some, you know, Riff, they song they just heard on Spotify or whatever. It's it's just confusing. It's really helpful in those moments to focus on well, what are we here to do and yeah. and help things go mm-hmm. smoothly. But that requires can require sometimes outside the meeting saying this is what we're seeking to accomplish. Right. Can I also say really quickly? You can say it slowly. In regards to uh, what you just said, in terms of that free flow of communication. What is going to promote humility and, a, and an, an awareness of what other people are doing are asking questions. We've mentioned that on the podcast before. Ask questions in whatever position you're in to your sound engineer. Hey, yes. how is this coming across? Hey, how is this sounding? Yep. You're welcoming feedback yep. that you might not want to hear, but will be so beneficial for you to understand, okay, this isn't serving... I think it's serving, but yeah. it's not serving the greater picture of what we're trying to do. So if my tone is too shrill, yeah, I'll roll that off. Yes. If I'm too loud, yes. I can back that off. Or if I'm too close to the mic because I'm harmonizing and it's overpowering, oh, yeah, that's helpful. I can yes. back off. So asking yes. those questions helps. Yes. Another thing we've done is the we have like four or five people who run sound. There'll be an email and sometimes text uh, where after the meeting, people just send their thoughts. Yeah. And sometimes people just ask, hey, how was the sound Sunday? Yeah. That is so beneficial. I mean, it sometimes is. they get into technicalities. <laughs> you know, well, the 2.5K on the snare was a little hot. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Does, we have a snare. We have a podcast about yeah. this, yeah. how to evaluate <laughs> <laughs> the frequencies of the snare drum. Uh, yeah, can get very specific. But but more broadly, it can be very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, I couldn't hear the sound. I couldn't hear this over here. Or no, yes. that was really good balance. And and just we're growing together. There's no yep. perfect yep. mix. Every Sunday's unique, different band, different people. And it's just helpful to have that ongoing communication about what's been happening. And, and yep. always guarding against the temptation to insist on our own way. Yeah. I mean, in this. Yeah, I think good. that's, I think that at the end of the day, like that's, what we're what we're up against it's our it's our selfish proud hearts yeah and and so whether an assist uh, a musician or, or someone running sound that's the when you're in a place where you feel that rising up yeah where no this is how it must be done <laughs> mm-hmm. i have to play this the drums is the right this way. way um or i have to mute this or or pull this back or whatever it is it's like that's when the red flag should go up yeah <laughs> yes we should go back to okay, what how has God called me to live at peace with others? Yes, and yes. what does it look like in this moment? Um, yeah, that's 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 our danger. Yeah, I think Absolutely. it's Romans twelve ten. Live in harmony yep. with one another. Yep. Never be haughty, but associate. Do not be haughty, but associate with lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's so easy to do. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially, well, not especially. I, I think of. Um, times when someone else is doing your monitor mix and you know it's just like i can barely play I, I do the, it's okay mm-hmm. you know yep. mm-hmm. have a time where you, maybe you can talk to someone this thing this might be helpful but there will be those times when you just don't hear what you want to hear yeah. and to become angry in those times or to become irritated that's just it's sin yeah and i would i would say if you are a 
if you're if you're that person that it's like wow every every Sunday I feel that mm. Mm. Uh, insisting on my own way um then perhaps that this is a time for you to take a step back yeah and uh and ask the Lord to work on your heart um and bring other people into that yeah uh, if you're a leader and there is that person or those people maybe your best musician or your best engineer is that way perhaps it's time to take us have, yeah. have them take a step back and and yeah. uh, and care for that person because this is yeah. what we're yeah. doing is about it's about people's souls yes and uh, that's far more important than the production value um, on a Sunday morning ultimately yeah yeah so when it's, I think about the question stand in your lane uh, the picture came might yeah we're not we don't even have lanes like we're in yeah. the canoe together. Yeah. We're doing crew. We're like it's like everybody's Boys in the boat. The, what's it, what's Boys it? in the boat. Boys in the boat. Yeah. It's a great movie. We're <laughs> a great book. Um, we're we're rowing in the same direction, and that's what we've got to see. We're yeah. we're not well, this it's, it's, opposing. The teams. Bible uses the body. I mean, yeah. it's, and yeah. every yeah. part uh, has every member has a part to play. Mm. Yes. Uh, but we're functioning together. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So it really can be. I mean, I've talked to so many leaders, so many different churches that where there's this tension, this just natural tension. How do you, how do we get or, you know? And it it well, it begins with the gospel. Have you been forgiven of your sins, yeah. justified in the sight of God, through through what Jesus did for you on the cross, taking your punishment? Have you been forgiven? Have you been brought into God's family? Are you one of God's children, together with all those who have? Tr repented of their sins and trusted in Christ, well, then that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's brought us together to serve these people who are going to be gathering for the church. And, and what a privilege it is. Mm -hmm. And what a joy to, to serve together in that way. Amen. Amen. Great question, Nathan. Thanks for submitting that to us. And uh, it was awesome to talk about this. With and you if guys. you have other questions, where can you send them? Sound plus doctrine at sovereigngrace.com. Spell out the plus. You do that Sound on purpose, plus doctrine at I did do that on purpose. Com. It was a test. That's good. We well got done. It. It's only taken us seven seasons. We still don't know it. <laughs> so uh, but we, we, do, do, we do appreciate we, when you send questions. We do. We do. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. Sovereign Grace Music exists to produce Christ-exalting songs and training for the church from our local churches. For more information, free sheet music, translations, and training resources, you can visit us at SovereignGraceMusic.org.